everyone. It's not yet noon. Step back here. Okay. If you could everybody sit down, we can get started with our speaker today. I'm Kevin Gillespie. Uh, I'm here uh, representing Derek Marabon, who uh, I don't have him in the trunk of my car because people go, what? He's not here. He loves speaking here. Well, he can't make it, so I'm here. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about uh, LA2M for a little quick second. First of all, anyone new here? <laughs> Some new people, that's good. Uh, LA2M meets every Wednesday here. A great uh, sort of um, grace of uh, Connors. Uh, great meal. Um, help us out. Uh, it's a nonprofit 501c3 corporation. So that means we're sort of self funded. And uh, we have this uh, tradition where we pass the bucket or hat around. And uh, you don't have to put anything in it, but $3 is sort of what we'd love to see. And um, if you can help us out, that's awesome. Uh, we're going to do the talk, about half an hour, get some time for a question and answer, and then we'll do our sort of round the, round the world. Uh, there's the basket. There's the magic basket. Uh, we'll do our little around the world talk, and everyone can stand up and uh, talk a little bit about who they are and what they do. Uh, promote what they need to promote. Anybody want to talk specifically about a big event they've got going on in the near future? Bueller? Okay. Uh, then we're going to get right to Gordon. Uh, this is Gordon Kangas. Oh, we talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it. No, we're passing it. Perfect. Gordon Kangas, ladies and gentlemen, is the owner of a company called Fluent. Uh, they, it's a company that helps people, trains people to be better at presenting. Uh, he comes from eight years. Uh, the business has been around eight years, right? And he comes from a background of comedy, which if you go to his website, it's, um, there's, you can link off to what he does, some very funny stuff. Uh, puppetry, which I find intriguing as well, and speaking, so presenting. So he's going to talk today about you know how to present, how to be better at it. He runs workshops to that effect. Uh, and like I said, check out his website, which is fluentpresentation.com, sorry. And uh, it goes deeper than what he's talking about today, because the comedy stuff and the puppetry is really cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, warm welcome for Gordon Kangas. Thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I have to correct him a little bit. The business is quite new. Actually, just launched in 2010, but I've, I've been uh, in front of crowds for about eight years doing just what Kevin said, uh, puppetry, comedy, acting. This is my passion. I love to communicate, and I, I hope that you do, too, because today we're talking about presentations. Um, who was here by, by uh, show of hands? Who was here two weeks ago? Tom Crawford spoke. That was fantastic, wasn't it? I loved it. I thought Tom had so many great things to say. Um, he covered a lot of terrific stuff. And if you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to go to la2m.org and watch the video because you're about to get something out of it. Today we're also talking about presentations, but we're going to go in sort of a different vein. Tom had focused on a lot of aesthetics and how do we do storytelling and make it work for our presentations. Today we're going to focus on what is it that you're trying to achieve with your presentation. I mean, every time that we give a presentation, we're giving it for a reason, right? We want to achieve something. So today we're going to figure out how do we set that goal for ourselves in each of our presentations? How do we distill that into an idea that our audience can get a hold of and really internalize? And then finally, what's a good way to get them there? Because at the end, that's what it's all about. Let's get them there. Get them to the product. Get them to the purchase. Get them to donate. Get them to learn. Whatever it is. So let's get started right off the bat. At the end of your table, you've got a stack of blank sheets of paper. Um, if you didn't bring something to write on, feel free to grab a sheet of paper. And uh, if you don't have something to write with, if you want to just raise your hand, we've got some pens we can hand out. If you brought a laptop, um, grab some paper. If you've got like a tablet computer or your own notepad, feel free to do on that. But you've got to be able to draw. You can't just type. We've got a few people up here that need pens. I'm going to get started with you folks. Um, it'll be easy for you guys if you don't have a pen to catch up real fast. On your sheet of paper, here's what I need you to draw. A square. You don't need to fill it in, you don't need to color it, just draw a square. You need to be able to put something in it, yeah. Pretend that this screen is your sheet of paper, it should take up about that much space on the sheet. That's an easy way. Okay, the next thing I need you to draw is right next to that square, an arrow. Simple enough. Draw an arrow. And then right next to that arrow, 
I need you to draw another square. Okay, got it? What you were looking at is a presentation in its most basic form. This is a presentation, but what does it mean? A presentation is about taking your audience from the position they have when they walk into the room, before you even get on stage, that mindset that they have, the opinion that they hold, the disposition they have towards certain actions. That red square is where they start. That green square is where you're taking them. It's whatever it is you want them to do or think. Okay? So in that first square, I need you to write the word position. Write the word position in that first square. Like I said, that's the position that they take before you've had their ear at all. In the next one, I need you to write the word idea. Write idea in the second box. This is the concept that you're putting in their mind. By show of hands, who has seen the, the film Inception? Who's seen that? Okay, all right, so most of you have seen it. Um, those of you who haven't, I'm not going to give anything away. Don't worry. It's, a, it's worth seeing, though. It's a good movie. But a big part of that film is this whole idea of putting an idea in someone's mind and doing it simply and with strategy so that not only do you put that in their mind, but they internalize it. They make it their own. They, in fact, believe it's their own idea, and it grows from there and leads them to take certain actions. I can think of no better example for what a presentation is all about than that film. Because what you're doing is leading your audience down a path, a journey of sorts, to internalize an idea that you've put before them. The question is, how do we decide what that idea is going to be? Because you can't change the position they have. You can't change that red square. You don't get to decide how they think when they walk into the room. The only thing you can change is what you want them to think. So let's talk about that green square. That's your goal here. Every presentation has a goal. Okay? Whether you set one or not, it has a goal. If you don't set your goal, you're going to end up with a default goal. All right? And those of you that have a real fear of public speaking, that, that might end up being, I just need to get through this presentation without throwing up or passing out. Okay? That's, sure, you probably achieve that goal. I hope that you do, for the sake of your audience mostly. But that's a goal, but does anyone really care if you achieve it? No. I mean, it's not that worthwhile of a goal. What we need to do in every single presentation that we make is to sit down and say, what is it that I want out of this presentation? Okay, this part, we're going to get to them, but for now, it's about you. What is it that you want to get out of it? Let's look at some examples of what those might be. For instance, I want them to go through our catalog. There's a good example of a goal. Okay. I, it's about me. They're doing the action, but this is what you want. Here's another one. I want them to donate. About me and about them doing something. I want them to donate. Here's a third one. I want them to vote yes. I want them to vote yes. These are all great goals. Why? Because they're clear. They're concise. Most specifically, they are achievable challenges. That's a word. Write that phrase down. Achievable challenge. Every goal that you set for a presentation needs to be an achievable challenge. That goal I mentioned earlier, make it through without passing out, that's achievable, but is it a challenge? Now, some of you may say yes, but I'm thinking, the odds are you're probably going to make it through in good health. Maybe, maybe a terrible presentation, but you'll probably make it through in good health. Okay? So it's not really a challenge. On the flip side, some of you who are very confident in front of crowds, and you're very motivated, and you set high goals for yourself, you might be doing the flip side. You guys are going, I want 100% of everyone in this audience to give money today. Okay, well, that's, that's a challenge, to be sure. But is it achievable? Is it realistic? Probably not. I mean, like I said, you can't control the way they are when they come into that room. You can't control it. Some of those people may not be in a financial position to give to whatever organization it is. You may not be able to control uh, biases that they have that you're not going to be able to fully overcome so that they're actually giving money. Now, you can set a more realistic goal, the same deal. Uh, I want at least 50% of the people in this room to give money today. Or I want at least 30% of the people in this room to give money today. Now we're talking. That's an achievable challenge. It doesn't say that you can't do better than that, but set yourself up for the possibility of success. Okay? So if that's our goal, is to get them there, 
But if you recall, I didn't have to write the word goal in that square. What word did I have to write? Idea, exactly. Idea. More specifically, we're talking about the big idea. All right? This is where it goes to them. If the goal is about you and what you want to get out of this presentation, the big idea is something that they can latch on to. It's born out of the big idea, but it's something that they can actually affirm and agree with. Let me give you some examples to kind of give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Here was one of our goals. I want them to go through our catalog. That's our, that is our goal. The big idea that you could pull out of that would be you will find what you're looking for in our catalog. You see the difference? The goal was I want them to go through our catalog. I want them to do this. The big idea, you will find what you're looking for in our catalog. That's something where they can say, you're right. I could find what I'm looking for in that catalog. They're not going to say, you're right. You do want me to go through our catalog. You know? There's a difference. They've got to be able to agree, internalize it, and think to themselves, that's something I can get on board with. Let's look at another example. I want them to donate. This is what I want, the goal, the big idea. Now is the best time to give. All right? So it's not necessarily that they have to donate, but it's this idea this idea you've planted in their head, and we're going to talk about how to get them there. But the point is, if you can get them affirming that idea, agreeing with the idea that, yeah, now is the best time to give, then why shouldn't I be giving right now? Here's, here's one more. I want them to vote yes. That's your goal, your big idea. Voting yes makes sense. You get them to say, voting yes makes sense. You get them to agree with that concept. Voting yes makes sense. So that when they're in that position to actually vote on whatever it is you, you're talking about, they think to themselves, should I vote yes or no? Well, voting yes really makes sense. Voting yes makes sense. They're not going to think, oh, that's right. Gordon wanted me to vote yes. Yes. All right? We don't care what you want. We care about what we want. So the big idea helps you focus on what they want to do. Now, I know we've got a lot of marketers and advertisers here, so I want to I want to throw this little tidbit in. Because I know you guys are looking for phrases where you can say, I want to be able to put that in print. I want to be able to put that on a banner, whatever it is. This is, a, this is something that you don't have to have in every presentation, but it's useful. It's the tagline. Okay, so you set your goal, your big idea comes out of your goal, but then what if you need something that's really catchy? You'll find what you're looking for in our catalog isn't particularly catchy, okay? And you may be saying that over and over and over in your presentation, and it's not going to stick. That phrase, anyway, the concept will, but the phrase won't. So how do you get that phrase to stick? You use a tagline, and that's just a conversion of the big idea. So for this, you'll find what you're looking for in our catalog becomes, you find it at Finnegan's. Now that's catchy, okay? It's got alliteration, it's short, it's brief, it's concise. It's not especially useful for you when you're building your presentation because you find that at Finnegan's is much more vague. It's more amorphous. You'll find what you're looking for in your in our catalog is going to help you build all your points. The tagline won't, but the tagline is something that you can keep saying again and again and again and again. You can put it up there. It looks good in print. So you don't have to have a tagline, but it can be a useful tool for you. Okay. So, before we go any further, I want to play a little game. I need somebody who's athletic. Does anyone who's spry? You're not going to have to lift weights or anything. You just need to be able to play hopscotch. But I'll do it. Alright, All right, Mark. Thank you. Give Mark and Andrew for volunteering here. Okay, Mark. Uh, here's the deal. Are you capable of playing hopscotch? Is this Wednesday? <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, good. All right, that's your, that's your routine then. Here's what I need you to do. I've got these two squares. Anyone ever played by, uh, show of hands, who's ever played the game, The Carpet is Wild? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah, thank you. All right, you guys know what I'm talking about. As a kid, did you ever play a game where you say to yourself, I can't touch the ground, right? You crawl around on the sofa, or the stools. All the furniture and the table, but you say, I just, you know, you don't let them touch the ground, right? That's the carpet is lava. We're going to play the carpet is lava today with Mark, the hopscotch king. Okay. 
So here's the deal. You recognize these squares here. Yep. Red square, green square. Once you step right on this green, this red square here, your goal is to get to this green square. Do you think you can do it? How many steps? Well, here's the deal. Here, simple, very simple rules. You're only allowed to step on the red square, the green square, and these touchstones here. And you've got to step on every single one in the order I lay them out. Do you think you can do that? Depends where you lay them out. Well, we'll see. <laughs> We're going to do this a few times, and what I need from you guys is to pay attention. If you can see, pay attention to where I lay them. We're going to have a diagram of, of it later, but it's going to be worth your while to pay attention because there's a profound point here. All right, you ready? Go ahead. Shoot. Okay. Do I get to put the other foot down? Well, you can't touch the lot. That's the only thing. Just two of them? Yep. Go ahead. Hey, okay, all right. All right. Well, we're going to do it again. Okay. So get back on the red square. We're going to do it again. Remember that layout? There's another one coming up. Go ahead and start, Mark. You know we've got stuff to do, so. I missed one. Lose. All right, hey, come in. All right. You're halfway done, Mark. Head back to that red square with the lava hit you. Okay, two more. Three points, excellent start. But you think, 
these are potential investors, I want to make us look strong, I've got to cover as much information as I possibly can, because if I don't cover it, they'll think that we're weak in those areas, that we don't have any strengths there. So what do you do? Well, you make your presentation about the sales team, and it starts to sound like this. Our sales force is, a, is in a great position for success because we recently increased our team by 20% and sent all of our salespeople to the Brenson Seminar, which focuses on building personal relationships with clients. It doesn't increase sales in the short term, but pays off in the long run. That was good. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even take three minutes. Well, that's only one point, right? <laughs> the point is, you say something like that, and you throw all that data into one concept, and your, your audience is going, wait, 20% of what? They have no idea what you're talking about because you didn't give them a chance to agree that, hey, it's actually a good idea for us to increase our sales force by 20% because maybe it isn't. Okay? That's something they have to agree with before they can move on to the rest. Was the Brenson technique a good idea? Did you actually learn something? Is your field something that does require personal sales? All of these things are things they have to agree with in order to move on. Touchstones that they have to jump to in order to get to your final idea. So watch out for these things where you cram way too much information at once. Now, does anyone remember the second layout? We had uh, Mark jump around the big things. What was the next one? Kevin did sign language here. It was all over the place. Right, it was all over the place. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. And in fact, um, Mark even said it's not going anywhere. Right? <laughs> and he was right. There's tons of little jumps. Okay. Now this does. I call this the zigzag. And this covered our original trouble with the first one, right? They weren't so far apart. So they're nice, easy to step touchstones. But what's the problem? You're going all over the place. Tons of different directions. All right? This is the presentation that no one's really sure why you're giving it. You know those presentations you've been in them? Maybe you've given them. Okay? But no one really knows what's the point. Everyone's thinking, what's the point? Mark's standing right here after he's already stepped eight things and it's going all over the place and he's going, what's the point? The most egregious offenders of this model are those of you who are really good at telling stories. Okay? Which is a great skill. I love stories. They're excellent tools in presenting. But what happens when someone has a tool that they really like and they know they like that, that they do really well with it? They use it all the time. Okay? For everything. So you end up with somebody who hasn't set that goal, and they're just like, I just got to tell stories because that's what I'm good at. So it works at first. You're here. They're telling a story. You're heading this way. And you're thinking, okay, okay, cool, interesting story. Okay, you get to here. Now what's the point? Oh, and they start another story. Okay, all right, so they start another story. You're working your way. Interesting story. Okay, now uh, what's the point? Oh, no, it still gets the point. Okay, another story. And it continues like that. How many of you have been in presentations like that? Yeah, exactly. At first you're thinking, this guy's great. And then you go, why am I here? And pretty soon you're on your smartphone or your laptop or you're rifling through papers and you've disengaged. In stand-up comedy, every joke has to be worth the punchline. The bill has to be worth the punchline. Okay? An audience is going to wait around, in the case of comedy, they're going to wait around through the boring stuff, the build-up, where you're telling this dull story because they know at the end, it's going to be a great laugh, and it's going to be worth paying attention. There's no knock-knock joke that lasts five minutes for a reason. There's no knock-knock joke that is that funny. Okay? No one's going to wait around five minutes for a knock-knock joke punchline. No one wants to wait around for 30 minutes for whatever point is over here. I don't care how great the point is, they're not going to believe you. Okay? They're not going to believe that it's worth telling eight stories to get there without giving them a little bit of, this is what we're talking about, this is where we're going. You'd like to be headed towards a goal. So watch out for that one. Remember that you're not there to be interesting. You're there to be effective. And I always get, I always get gripe about this. Well, I don't understand how you're good. Being interesting is a good thing. Don't get me wrong. Being interesting is great. But don't forget that your job is to achieve your goal. It's not to be Mr. Interesting or Mr. Jokey Joke. Okay? You're not there to be interesting. You're there to be effective. Now, part of being effective might include being interesting, telling some jokes, having a dynamic personality. But if you're just setting out to say, man, I, I just got to make this presentation interesting, well, you can go in all kinds of directions. But are you actually going to do something for yourself or your company? Probably not. All right, what was the next one? We had, uh, we had two more layouts. We did the, the wide space. We did the zigzag. Who remembers what the next one was? 
That was the one where they were all really close together, right? You call this one a tiptoe, all right? I think Marx made some kind of comment when he was going along about how uh, he could do he could do better than that. That he doesn't need them that close together. And that's exactly what each of us would think in a presentation that looks this way. This is the over-explained presentation. All right. It's nice that they're being very direct. It's nice that they're not requiring us to leap to every point. But they're also not putting a whole lot of confidence in our intelligence, are they? Let me give you an example. You work for a nonprofit. Let's say your nonprofit that you like is uh, they help high schoolers improve their writing skills. Okay, so you make your presentation about why this is important. And you say, high schoolers need writing skills to be successful. They need them all along the way. They need them when they write that first college essay. You know, that essay has got to be, that's got to be, uh, it's got to be clear. It's got to show them that they're different than everybody else. Show those recruiters that they're different than everybody else. And it's got to show that they've got a command of language. And it's got to show that, that they understand where they're going and how to digest information and how to apply it. And you know, once they get to college, they got to have they got to have those uh, writing skills too. They got to be able to write papers that regurgitate knowledge and apply the concept. You see where I'm going? It's getting repetitive. We get it. All you have to say is, high schoolers need writing skills. They need them to write essays, to be in classes, and to write resumes and be successful in the world. Done. Okay. Presentations that do this are over explaining every concept. So if you're one of those people that's very organized, you don't just underline, you underline, circle, highlight, and stick, you know. We love you, you keep us organized, you keep us productive, but watch out because you're the worst offenders with this category. All right, there's one final one, okay? It looked like this. I call that just right. And this is the model where they're nice and properly spaced here. Okay, it's a nice direct route. It's perfect. You may be thinking, well, wouldn't it be perfect if they were all in a perfectly straight line with this spacing? No. Here's why. I said that your presentation is a journey. You've got to take them on something where they're getting on board. All right? No journey is worth anything if there isn't a little bit of scenery involved. Okay? There's got to be some color, some flavor to the journey that you're taking them on. And a good example of just diverging just a little bit from the direct data path here would be if you, let's, we have marketers here, you're on a marketing team, you're presenting to a bunch of other teams within your company, and it's one of these meetings where everybody knows what's going to be shared even before the presentation starts. Okay? The most exciting of presentations, of course. All right? So you think everybody's going to zone out, so what do you do? Well, you're talking about your sales strategy for this new, this new product you're going to launch. And as you're going along, you say, and you know what? When we were researching this, we realized that this is almost the exact same campaign strategy that Rolls-Royce used for its model back in 1930. I mean, it's, it's, it's exactly the same. If you look at here, here, and here, we just thought it was really interesting. And then you go back on with your presentation. Well, what did you just do there? It wasn't, it wasn't a direct beeline to your goal, but you gave them some flavor, okay? You gave them something interesting to hook on to, and you gave them a memory hook. So that when they think back to your presentation, they're going to remember that little tidbit that none of them knew before. You made that valuable to them, even if they didn't think it was valuable. And you're much more likely to get them to make all those jumps to your final goal. I'd love to talk about how do we, how do we figure out what those touchstones are going to be. But we're limited on time, time and I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to introduce himself. So that's all it is that I've got today. I just wanted you to remember that what we talked about was you can't change the red square. You can't change what they think when they walk in before you take the stage. What you can change is the goal that you set for yourself, the big idea that you construct for your audience, and the methodology you use to get them there. So thank you very much. Thanks, Gordon. Thanks, Gordon. Hello. Thanks, Gordon. Awesome. And certainly as a presenter, just uh, like Tom a couple weeks ago, it's just so amazing to me to see other people's style. And, and I'm going to do a lot of thinking about what you said. It's awesome. So, anybody have any questions? Gordon? Yeah. In regards to setting the achievable challenge, mm -hmm. do you also assess your audience before you set that then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I said, you can't change what they think, but you can understand it better. And so, uh, so much of 
uh, being able to set an achievable challenge is exactly what you're saying. Uh, is this achievable with this particular audience? One audience is going is, to, it's achievable to say that 80% of them are going to buy the product today. And you know, another crowd, 1% is an achievable challenge. So it really depends. But yeah, good question. Yeah. Piggybacking on Scott's question, what's the toughest type of audience that you have to present to? That I personally have to present yeah. to? Yeah. Um, I would probably say uh, old people in the morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably that's that's the death nail. Um, so where's the bar for old? I believe the fifth, but uh, be anybody yeah. in the morning. Um, What's your philosophy on foreshadowing the green big idea early on before you get to the real kind of oh, yeah. end point? Well, I would say that you should always be talking about what this is. So let's just, you know, I, do, I know we're using sort of a metaphor here, but the fact is them stepping onto that green square is them agreeing with it, them internalizing the idea. But, you know, in order to get them there, you should be talking about this idea from, from step one. He's saying, you know, voting yes makes sense. I'm not going to tell you why. Because right now, I know a lot of you are thinking that you want to vote no on November 4th or whatever it is. But I'm telling you, voting yes makes sense. And here's why. And you make that first point, and then you say, voting yes makes sense because of this. And voting yes makes sense because of this. And pound it in. But yeah, yeah. Does that answer the question? Yes, thanks. Great. Anyone else? Well, thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, as improv is good for personal skills, can you give us a little uh, a, a hint about breaking in or practicing for, for doing comedy? Oh, for doing comedy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say uh, open mics are the most painful good you'll ever go through. Um, but, uh, you know, my technique when I was building up material for stand-up comedy was, I'm, I'm an auditory learner. Um, I would encourage everyone, just for your own sake, to figure out what kind of learning you are, whether you're tactile or visual or olfactory, I suppose. But figure out what kind of learner you are. I'm auditory, so what I would do is, when I thought, hey, this sounds like a good bit, I would keep saying it out loud. I don't listen to the radio in my car. I talk to myself all the time. And I work through new bits, and I would, I would phrase it out, phrase it out, phrase it out. So um, I just keep running with it and, and running into the ground until you've got a good three minutes to take it to the stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you actually tell us what your achievable challenge was for for this presentation? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah my, my, my goal was to get through this without passing out or throwing up. <laughs> my, my goal here, um, actually, was, was to get you guys to understand that presentations are this. They are a journey. They are a journey of getting them there. My big idea is uh, you have to get your audience to internalize the concept. The more fun tagline that I used was, get them there. Get them there. And I probably could have punched that into your heads even more. Um, but that was, that was my goal, is to make you understand this idea. This idea of touchstones and goals. So, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Do you know any good jokes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you go to GordonCangus.com, <laughs> click comedy, you feel free to watch those videos. So. Okay, well thank you so much. I appreciate your time. It's a, it's a great event and I'm uh, happy to be here. So thank you. Um, obviously a great presenter. And I, again, I kept talking about his other websites, but uh, this is obviously a great presenter and a great trainer. So thank you again, Gordon. What we're going to do now is we'll pass the mic around the room. People sort of stand up, take a couple seconds to talk about who you are and what you do. And uh, we can all learn about one another. Let's start here. Come on. I'm Mark Olivier, and I do affiliate marketing. I'm Joel Vergut with Fish Fish. If you uh, shop where you see a Fish Fish logo, you can catch a deal and we'll donate to your favorite charity. If you're uh, curious, check it out at fishfish.com. Hi, I'm Lorraine. Um, I actually am not into business. I'm a nurse, but I'm interested in maybe starting out one day. So, so I think. Hi, I'm Scott. I'm uh, in IT and software. Um, just recently relocated to the area and just uh, checking things out. 
Hi, I'm uh, Tim Rose. I'm currently a grad student here at Michigan, and uh, as an engineer, I get to I get treated to a lot of technical, boring presentations all the time. So I wanted to see if I can maybe change some things in engineering school. Hi, I'm Steve Pragus. I'm with Dish Fish, and as Joel said, uh, it's a way that we get money. We're launching April 1st, and what we'd really like to do is have each and every one of you here go to our website, dishfish.com, and sign up. And when you do that, I'll be happy to recommend you on LinkedIn. I think we all need recommendations, and I'll be happy to do that. Thanks for signing up. I want to take Take Gordon's lead. I'd like to thank you for signing up. <laughs> I want to say thanks for Gordon. I met him yesterday, and uh, it's great to be able to talk about presentations here. I'm going to do an invitation to uh, a group that's trying to come into town and build a mobile marketing system. If you see Todd here, say hello. Todd and I and, and Tammy are working on that process. We're going to do a little demo outside here after the meeting. Hi, I'm the user experience industry. I just want to learn a little bit more about presentations. Hi, I'm Kim Mays. This is my first LA2M. I'm a new ad executive with Current Magazine, and thank you for advertising the current. This is my sales manager, Aubrey. Okay. <laughs> I'm the manager with Kurt and Ann Arbor Family. If you guys have a, a story like to advertise or like to promote an event like this, please give us a call. Let us know. You'll find all our information online. Hi, I'm Jenny McKillop at JSOR, which is part of Ithaca. And um, if you're about to move to New York City, we do have a job opening in our New York office for our communication specialists. <laughs> I'm Bud Gibson. I started the search marketing program at EMU, and we produce a lot of great students each year, and Gordon was actually my student. And I think I understand after today's presentation how he did so astoundingly well in the class. <laughs> Hi, my name is B. Gasha. I'm actually an editor for a new tech company called Hashhead. Uh, we coin ourselves the reality TV trash of Twitter. We show the best messages on Twitter for Hi, so. uh, Dean Sachs from Profit Makers. Uh, Gordon was talking about a big idea. Do you know what happened on February 24th? Does anybody in this room know what happened? Your internet life changed. So you need to go in and Google Google Farmer because the rules have changed completely. Check it out, please. Uh, David Wade, and I'm an intern with Genex here. Yeah. Y'all should probably know me by now. <laughs> I'm Amanda. I'm also an intern at Ingenix. Hi, I'm Jerry Willis of My Self Worth. We connect college students and business professionals. Hi, I'm Lance. Uh, I, just, I started a startup called GillPay, and it's a pretty revolutionary billing application. Check it out at GillPay.com. Uh, we're releasing it. Hopefully this month. <laughs> Hi, my name's Nikki. I work for LA2M and I just help with the sign. Hi, my name's Lucky Lane. I'm from Mandy and Pandy. Uh, we're a startup that's looking to raise a million dollars to get our $10 million television off the ground. And so I have a presentation that has a goal, and then I'm going to do uh, afterwards just to see if there's a way we can perfect the pitch a little bit. Uh, excuse me. Greg Moore with Taz Networks. We're a managed IT service company. And I must admit, Ian, you just scared the car out of me. Hi, my name is Audrey Wong Chung, and I'm the owner and founder of Belisa Design. Uh, Belisa Design is an international fashion company that specializes in luxury goods for men and women. And we have been garnering attention from celebrities. So if you go on our website, you can see who's been wearing our stuff, Dane Lynch, uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt. And we just got, we just found out that we were included in the Dancing with the Stars gift suite. So you'll see our products on TV. We were there last year, but now we're in the ABC studio. Uh, first of all, thank you for a great presentation. Uh, my name is Josephine. I'm with Insert Catchy Headlines. We find your catchy headline or catchy story, and we put you on the news, on TV, radio, magazines, and newspapers. Thank you.
Uh, Douglas Clemish, uh, independent uh, web developer, and then uh, somebody hired me to sell uh, stuff on eBay. So if anybody has a big eBay experience, come here. I'm Bill Kangas. I'm with uh, Taxon Tom uh, Thompson Tax and Accounting, part of Thompson Reuters, and uh, related to their speaker today. <laughs> I'm Cliff Sheldon from Andover State Bank. I'm Dave Murray with Good Stuff Studios, which is a graphic design firm here in Ann Arbor. I don't have anything funny to say because I'm on a sugar low from Five Punchy yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you guys want to come over, I've still got my portfolio for everybody to check out. Thanks. Hi, I'm Andy Ma. Um, I do many things, but the most current thing I'm doing is uh, the equivalent of a Zappos for uh, fine diamond jewelry. Um. Hi, Dave Cam, uh, Principal with IB Marketing Consulting Services. Uh, my focus is primarily business to business and technology marketing. A wide spectrum of things for uh, small and mid-sized businesses. I'm Roger Rail. Uh, besides doing the video here, I do it for a few other networking groups. And one of them is uh, Ignite Ann Arbor, and one of the people who presented there is from New York. They have an organization called Story Collider. They're going to be presenting, I think it's at the Ann Arbor District Library. Yes. Um, this Friday. Um, yeah. um, and they're going to have, I don't know, seven or eight presenters. And what Story Collider is, is it's uh, people talking about their personal experience with science. So it's entertainment, entertaining and enlightening. So uh, sign up or show up. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Otto Geisman, and I am a capital equipment sales and marketing um, currently in transition. Hi everybody, I'm Todd Gagne. I have um, Isaac, and we have the short code 90210 for text message marketing, and I'd like you to all to take out your cell phones and text TMO Town. 90210 because we're supporting Kyle and Stuth and the sub to the South to Southwest for Team Motown for the GM uh, challenge that they're in. So I'm also a not what I'm not an expert in is making t-shirts. <laughs> That's what that says. Text the uh, Motown the 90210. That's a fun I, I did do that one. Um, so yeah, um, we text everybody that's using cell phones. Um, people walking into fountains and walking into cars and all that. So. Yeah, hey, let me let me jump in here. And I want to thank Todd for covering for me last week on the video here. I'm Tammy Burgess with Women Making Connections. We help business people build relationships through fun and social environments and events. We also are using our new postcards as a marketing material, but being part of Todd's team, if you text 90210, you can type in WM Connect and you will get a free entrance to any one of our events. And like Mark said, if you'd like to stay and hear a little bit more about that, it's a great new marketing tool, and people opt in so you're not spamming anyone. Um, we'll be here at 1.30, so stop by and see us. Today? Today. Where? Right here. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Scott Ringline, and I'm in the business of creating jobs and wealth. I own uh, a consulting company currently working on a bioenergy power plant in Canada. Um, I also own a resort in northern Michigan called Ringlines Riverfront Resort. Put a .com on it and that'll take you to the website. And uh, this year I'm launching a company called On Point Business Planning, planning Solutions, which will be educational based uh, business planning and executive summary planning uh, consulting. Hi, uh, my name is Jim Overbeck and my company is 401 Systems. We're the hospital scheduling guys. And uh, I love it, LA2M. I, I come when I can. Remember uh, several weeks ago, the guy talked about business cards? And I had like the worst business card in the world. <laughs> and uh, I completely redesigned it, and I'm pretty happy about that. And now I have to go back and look at my PowerPoints and see if I can connect the dots. So thanks for the <laughs> Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Bob Amaradin, I'm and I'm an angel capital investor. 
Hi, I'm Dee Davey. I'm an independent marketing contractor, and I help mid-sized businesses who provide services to their customers when they have an idea for a new service but lack the time or resource to actually take that idea and make it real. Hello, I'm Lanny White. Um, I have a sympathetic ear for small business stories and a way to navigate through the shoals to grow. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Vince Janice, and I'm a business development and engineering uh, leader that's currently in transition. And LA2M has found very important. It's been important to me to learn more about making better presentations in the transition. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Mike. One with Sandler Training here in Ann Arbor. And we do just one thing, and that's help small businesses and entrepreneurs grow their sales. Um, but I want to add a couple of things. Um, yes, big week for Michigan basketball. <laughs> a lot of Spartans here. We've been going for the past uh, three years. It's full thousand days since you do this thing. Well, we've got a voice this year. Can't wait for football season. The other thing I want to share with you is my son Michael went to preschool with Mandy. So, big fan of Mandy and Mandy. <laughs> I'm Monty Fowler. I do web development, webwidestudios.com, and that's no joke. I'm Gordon Kangas. I own Fluent Presentations. I do things like this at your sites. I, I do workshop seminars as well as uh, project coaching, so if you've got one big speech you got coming up and want a little help with it, get in touch with me. Another round of applause for Gordon. Great job. <laughs> He's going to talk about next week, which I'm excited to hear about, but I just want to thank everybody for coming. Great talk. Great to see everybody here. I do want to thank Nikki and Tiffany from Ingenix who help uh, put this whole thing together. They do a lot of behind-the-scenes work, and um, a lot of times that's thankless. So thank you to you guys. I'm Kevin Gillespie. I'm working with Derek at Ingenix. Um, I'm a communicator, a connector, and uh, I like people. So here's Dee Davies, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, we have Jim Hume from Fire Branding Company. And if anybody saw Jim last night at Marketing Roundtable, anybody go to our, the topic is completely different. Um, Jim is going to be covering What's Jim going to be covering? Yeah. He's going to be covering marketing the mind. This is looking at marketing from a behavioral perspective. How people make decisions, why they make decisions, and the things that marketers and business owners need to think about when they're shaping their marketing. So next week, Jim Hume, Marketing the Mind. See you at LA Jerome. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.